All right, so welcome back to another episode of Fast Casual Nation. I'm your host, Paul Barron. And as you guys know, this show is all about fast casual restaurant innovation, the leaders, some of the technology, and also the brands that kind of uh, populate the space. Today, we're gonna actually dive into a very hot topic, and that is ghost kitchens. Um, the biggest thing I think that we're seeing in terms of trends, especially around ghost kitchens, is how do you put one together? How do you build the perfect one how do you make it work for your business or your brand? Well, today we're gonna have an expert that has now jumped into the ghost kitchen business, and that is Louis Basile, who is the founder at Wildflower right out of Phoenix, Arizona. Great to have you back. Thanks, Paul. Really uh, appreciative of the opportunity to uh, talk about what we're doing. Yeah, so I got a chance, a little bird, uh, jumped uh, and said, hey, Lewis is doing something special out there in Phoenix. Maybe you should uh, take a look. And uh, I got a chance to go look at a little bit about what you guys are doing at Nobana. And I love the brand concept for our viewers, listeners, readers. Talk to me a little bit about what Nobana is that's unique and different away from Wildflower and kind of why you went that direction. Sure. So, you know, um, pre, for those of the viewers that don't know, Wildflower is a local uh, Arizona company. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we were operating 16 restaurants in a manufacturing facility, and we were serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner with really unique menus at each part of those days right. with soup, salads, and sandwiches sort of carrying throughout the day. And the key component is this naturally made artisan sourdough bread that carries the whole menu together. So mm -hmm. while we're, all, we're, we're actually celebrating our 25th year um, of being in business, so uh, I'd like to congratulate all the breadheads and Wildflower on um, being a legacy brand at this point. Um, we were crazy. looking for new and innovative, innovative uh, offerings. Um, and in the evenings, our menu consists again of those soup, salads, and sandwiches at Wildflower. And then we introduce pastas. And one of the things that we know is that, um, you know, pasta is a uh, craveable food. However, it's not something that most people want to eat on a nightly or daily basis. So we were thinking about what fits into that category that we could offer at Wildflower. And we, we came up with the, the idea of broth bowls or noodle bowls. Right. Um, mm -hmm. We saw a lot of soup and that seemed to be a natural fit. Well, then the pandemic came across us in March and instead of thinking about expanding the menu and reaching more guests on a nightly basis, like all right. restaurants, we were just fighting for survival. Um, once yeah. we got through all of that, the, um, you know, most of the formula for success in getting through the pandemic has really been about simplifying the menu, simplifying operations, um, and really moving back to a more core, um, what made you what you are sort of format, right? So right. Um, we still didn't lose the idea of wanting to do these noodle broth bowls. We had done a lot of development on it. So we started thinking about, okay, well, why don't we launch that as a completely separate brand? Because mm -hmm. to ask operations to, integr in to integrate a whole new line of product during the time where most people aren't eating in the restaurant, hard to get that message out, just didn't seem to make sense to me whatsoever. Yeah. So yeah. that then, then we said, okay, well, we don't have quite enough menu offerings basically for a whole brand. So we've got to do mm -hmm. a little more development. So that's where we came up with adding some wraps, few salads, um, adding some dessert items, figuring out how we could take some beverages and make those transportable. And that's when we said, okay, now we've got something that's still pretty simple, however, executable. We've still got this extra capacity in the kitchens because we're not doing mm -hmm. the volumes we were doing pre-pandemic. So let's right. give it a try. And that's yeah. really where we came up with the idea of launching Nobana. Very cool. I like the fact that, so is the operation running inside your existing restaurant units or are you using this at your commissary? How are you guys operating it from a tactical standpoint? Yeah. So um, the initial test 
is being run out of the original store. Um, okay. So that's the store um, that's, you know, for viewers or listeners that are in Arizona, that's the one at the 101 in Frank Lloyd Wright. That's where it all started 25 years right. ago. And the reason that we chose that store is really very simple. It's the closest to our support center or slash corporate office. And that way we can touch it and we can feel it and we can experience it on a regular basis. Because when you're launching a new brand, it's essential that all forms of leadership and management are on an ongoing regular basis, ensuring that the quality of the food is there, presentation is there, and that things are running like you want. Because, you know, when you, regardless of how you launch a brand, you want to give it your best shot to make sure that it makes it. And that was the simplest way for us to do that. Yeah, I like the fact, uh, from a setup standpoint, uh, and I want to talk about the menu in a second, but um, yeah. from a setup standpoint, I know you guys are always, you know, kind of experimenting with equipment and systems and all that kind of stuff. What are you finding now that you're running a ghost kitchen in terms of what you guys had to change inside your operation? What were some of the things you had to do to kind of get prepped for this from an equipment standpoint, maybe even from a uh, operational standpoint? So I think that from an equipment standpoint for the wildflower, because the wildflower was always built as a, you know, a, a live kitchen, right? So, yeah, and that right. may sound funny to some viewers, but there are many people that compete in the restaurant business that really don't have a kitchen. They're, they're exactly. assemblers of products and there's been lots of technology in the equipment side of the of our of the restaurant industry that's allowed you to make incredibly great right. food without having a a food service uh, kitchen hood for example yeah. or a griddle yeah. or a burner or something like that so the wildflower from an equipment perspective and that's one of the reasons that we pick this you know um theme of food asian food bowls noodle bowls wraps we had all of the equipment mm -hmm. um and so the equipment um, really wasn't an issue. I can tell you that space is an issue, right? Because when you're trying to organize your kitchen, it's always easiest for your line cooks to have all of the ingredients easily accessible. And yeah. you know, there's never enough room in the kitchen. And again, those that are familiar with the wildflower know that pre-COVID, our breath of menu was large and we had lots of ingredients and we pride ourselves on the uniqueness of our food and the little ingredients that I had a touch here and touch there that make food craveable. Well, we had to do the same with Nobana. So really the biggest challenge has been finding line space to store the ingredients that are necessary to make the Nobana mm -hmm. menu. Yeah. However, we've overcome those challenges for now. And, you know, look, it only launched on January 7th. So we're about two and a half weeks into this test. And, uh, you know, we're finding our feet here. And like most restaurants, line cooks, restaurant managers, operators, they're incredibly flexible and adaptable to figuring out how to make things work that guys like you and I sometimes think about and go, that's going to be a great idea. Um, yeah, we don't get it quite right. So um, I'm pretty confident that the team that we've assembled is going to figure out the little nuances there. Yeah, for sure. We, okay, so it's only at that one location is the plan to try to populate this in other parts of Phoenix so that you can kind of handle the, you know, both the demographic changes, but also the logistics to other you know, households in that area. Cause obviously Wildfire has many units there across the Phoenix Metro. Is that the plan for it? Or are you going to stay pretty close to home? Nope. Um, I think that, you know, for us, it's really important first to get, you know, proof of concept tested, right? right. So um, I think that you've done, um, the industry has read, you know, many incredible stories about brands that are on a sort of rocket ship uh, expansion yeah. plan. And, you know, before you know it, they're, they're no longer around. So yeah. Um, yeah. I think that steady as it goes is the approach for Nobana. Um, as I stated, we're only uh, two and a half weeks into our uh, initial rollout. Um, we just started telling people about Nobana 
Um, and we just issued a press release about a week ago. We've gotten right. some nice coverage locally about Novana. And, yep. you know, we've got a forecast of P&L. And look, um, it only makes sense if in the end it's something that consumers want. It's something that yep. consumers think is really good. They're willing to pay for it. Um, and if we get all of those things right, then we'll start rolling that out to other wildflowers. Yeah. I, I, well, I think if you're, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I, that's something that I've, I, you know, I've known you for many years. Uh, and that's something I've always appreciated about you is that you, you have been one of those very, cautious growth guys and very strategic in how you're growing your business. So that's good to hear. I'm glad to see you you going, continuing down the direction. Of course, I didn't expect anything different. Yeah, you know, look, I, I think that it's always, look, it's always better to be thoughtful. I mean, if you, in my experience, and you and I have known each other for a long time, and I've been in this business for 40 plus years, I think if you have something that really consumers love and want that getting it out there a month or two six months even earlier than the next person doesn't really matter in the end it's really about yeah. the daily execution and the ability to keep the menu fresh stay top of mind with the consumer and deliver a quality product that represents value to them that really wins the day and i think we've proven right. that um, because we've been around for 25 years that, that's a hard thing yeah. to do it is. Back to your uh, design that you guys did. Uh, so changing and setting up the line was obviously a big one. I've been, I think I've been at that location when we yeah. shot an episode of Fast Cat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I remember that line in there with that big center island. Um, yep. So were you able to maintain the same line? Were you mixing, matching, or were you putting a secondary line in the back? How did you guys, guys kind of do that? No, we're, uh, we, we haven't really changed the configuration of the kitchen. We've just really done an analysis about what sells, what isn't selling in terms of ingredients uh, okay. and being yeah. very strategic about what gets placed on the top of the make lines, basically, because yeah. we have, you know, we've been fortunate enough that our restaurants have been busy and we have this storage areas. The storage areas, though, sometimes are inconvenient. Now, for the most part, most of our restaurants have refrigerated drawers as part of their line setup. So that makes mm -hmm. it a little easier to access ingredients that you might not be using, you know, only, only a few times during the ship. The reality is, is that analyzing that, figuring out what goes where, of course, trying to use as many ingredients as we had at the wildflower in the Nobana menu so you're not duplicating or adding ingredients was all part of the formula to build Nobana and make it a successful integration into the existing restaurants. Yeah, very cool. Um, all right, so when you're building a ghost kitchen, typically, uh, strategy is is put into the menu development. I know you guys uh, worked with a chef. Was this a chef that you have worked with before? What was kind of the way that you brought in the culinary aspect to develop the recipes? So um, pre-pandemic, um, we had a um, an opening in our product development um, position, um, and we were starting to. Uh, search for the right person for product development. Um, pandemic hit, um, obviously we're just fighting for survival. Once we figured that right. out, I started looking again and Chef Mayo or Chris Mayo has been somebody that I've been talking to locally here for the past five or six years to join the wildflower. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for whatever reason, timing just wasn't right. Um, I reached out to him again in the spring of uh, 2020. Um, we started a dialogue and he joined the team in, um, in July, I think, of uh, 2020. Okay. And so he wasn't brought on specifically for the Novana project. He was really just brought on to do product development for Wildflower as a whole. Um, and then we started evolving the idea of launching the ghost kitchen um, with Novana as the menu. And Chris took the lead along with uh, Emily Lamar, who's a marketing consultant that I hired um, yep. and the wildflower team. So, um, you know, 
launching something like a brand like Nobana or launching any brand is an incredible team effort. And I, I feel a little bit like it's the Academy Awards where if you try to thank everyone, you always leave somebody out. <laughs> I just want to let everyone know that it takes a real team effort and everyone at the Wildflower did an incredible job getting this thing launched. Yeah, I'm looking here at the menu, uh, Thai crunch salad, spicy soba noodles, uh, Korean beef wrap, which is uh, one of my favorites, uh, the chicken, uh, the Thai chicken wrap, the bone broth bowls. So kind of applying some of those cross utilization uh, aspects to the wildflower menu, is was it easy enough for you guys to be able to not have to go out and repopulate your entire supply chain line list? Uh, or was it something that you kind of built the menu based on some of the utilization uh, tactics that you're already using? I think it's a combination of both. Um, I mean, look, the wildflower has a, 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 a arguably, um, I think you've even told me too many SKUs at times. Okay. So, you know, we've got a, a breadth of suppliers that we've, you know, have relationships with. Um, and then there were some things that were incredibly challenging, finding the right um, um, vehicle for the wrap, um, finding something that we thought was the quality that we wanted. And that's not something that we manufacture. Um, so um, for us, um, it was a combination of our existing resources, finding new resources, and just being willing to explore those things. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you can't, you can't take, I, I, I know that people take the technology sometimes for granted, particularly the internet. However, you know, I, I started in the restaurant business before the internet and the internet is just a phenomenal resource to allow you to instantaneously search and look for things that you just never would have found years ago. Yeah. For sure. Well, and that's, I think that leads me to my last question or question area. And that is, um, you know, dealing with third party, obviously you guys have lined up with all of the traditional third party outlets. Is this something that, and I know you have a very good direct relationship with many of the Wildflower customers, uh, you know, from a communication standpoint, do the third parties, is this one of those products that is just a must have for a ghost kitchen? Or do you think there's any opportunity on growing ghost kitchens without these third-party marketplaces? Hmm, that's a really good question. Um, I think it's probably really hard to grow a third a ghost kitchen without um, a delivery network. Yeah, uh, without and, the system. And, you know, um, I may be in the minority here. Um, but I, I, however, I think that it's, um, and, and it took me a while to come around to it. I, I think the delivery services, um, are really, uh, serve a purpose. And I mm -hmm. think that they're, um, efficient at what they do. And I'm not convinced that I can do it much more efficiently than they can. So, um, I think that. Um, without the delivery aspect of uh, ghost kitchens, I think it's probably hard to create enough volume um, to yeah. make it worthwhile. Um, I can well, tell you discovery, that, yeah, it's going to be tough. If, let me, yeah, I can tell you that. I mean, look, I, again, it's early on. Um, I think it's really hard to build sales. Um, I think that sure. when you have a successful brand, I think you take it for granted that, you know, well, we've always been busy. Um, well, we, you know, yeah, thankfully, you know, thankfully the wild flower 25 years ago started out busy. Um, surely not what we're doing today. However, um, launching something new um, is, it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of, um, it takes a lot of planning. It takes yeah. a lot of um, marketing. It takes a little luck, it takes some execution, but I don't think anyone should take sales for granted. And I don't think they're as easy to come by as one might think they are if you're just a casual observer. Yeah, and I think that's the thing when we talk about ghost kitchens is there's so many brands that are just dropping these in without a lot of thought and 
really process of how this is going to affect not only their own business, but also the growth of the ghost kitchen business itself. It'll be interesting to see how the third party platforms adjust to this because we are seeing a lot of uh, ghost kitchen growth because this could be their their savior where, you know, some of the, uh, you know, traditional concepts are, are kind of trying to move back to the direct to takeout model. So lots happening there. Uh, glad to see what you guys are doing internally from an operational standpoint too, because I think that's going to be very solid. So it's going to be fun. I can't wait to see how Nobana uh, fares after about six months to a year. What is the time frame for you to say we've got something or let's go back to the drawing board? Um, I think that, you know, surely by mid spring, you know, so we're talking about, I don't yeah. know, 10, 12 months. weeks max, okay. you know, we All should right. know if we've got something that's worth, you know, going to another restaurant or two. And, and yeah. look, I mean, from the, the way the wildflower plan is today, and again, you know, I encourage anyone that's listening to know that you got to be flexible in your planning. What I say today may change tomorrow because I have new information. Yeah. Um, however, for me, it seemed there's two things. One is there's some wildflower restaurants that simply one of some of our older restaurants, they don't have the space. There's just, this just would not right. work in those restaurants. Yeah. So those restaurants, until we can renovate those or we figure out a different way, no bond is just not an option at those restaurants. Yeah. And then yeah, I think there sure. are some either markets or demographics locations that might not support this kind of food. Um, I think yep. that we have, what's great about this is you have data from your existing base of wildflower about what mm -hmm. restaurants really thrive in delivery, which ones the guests might be a little more resistant to or not as accepting of. And so I think if you take all of what we've learned and you apply that to rolling this out, actually the next store or two or even rollout might become easier, which makes sense because you got your learning yeah. from the first one. So yeah, definitely. I, I think it's springtime where we make that decision. You know, everybody, if you don't know, newsflash, Arizona is really hot in the summertime. So maybe it doesn't make the most sense to roll that out in the summer. And maybe it's a fall rollout to the restaurants that we think make the most sense. That's really premature, but maybe that's the thoughts of today. Yeah, good stuff. Lewis, it's always fun talking with you. Thank you so much. Uh, best to you and what you're doing there with Nobana. I can't wait to uh, one day get back out to Scottsdale and try to order that <laughs> and get a get one of those dishes for sure but uh hopefully that'll be coming soon uh thanks for stopping in today awesome thanks paul it's always a pleasure and um, anyone that wants to reach out to me and pick my brain about ghost kitchens feel free to reach out there you go you heard it right from lewis basile's mouth though. so um you're starting a ghost kitchen maybe you're in a position with your brand trying to salvage what you have and and you're trying to build into some new marketplaces i think those are some of the strategies that we're continuing to see and it's guys like lewis i think that are starting to really kind of innovate and also educate themselves on what's working uh if you have a ghost kitchen story or concept in fast casual that you think maybe we should have on the on the show make sure and send us an email to producer at foodabletv.com or you can hit me up directly over on Twitter, at Paul Barron. That's the best way to reach me. If you're catching this over on Spotify or one of the podcast apps, make sure and leave a rating. And if you are watching this over on our video platforms and all the different places, including YouTube, make sure and subscribe. Hit the bell so it gives you notifications when new stuff comes out here on Foodable. We'll catch you next time right here on Fast Casual Nation.